All right, everybody, we are doing something fun and interesting today. We are going to be trying to find the closest player or the closest chest, because we've only got one player in here and it's hard to prove that I'm actually going to the closest player. And the other thing is how to use remotes. So we've got two remotes here. We've got just a normal one and then we've got the legendary one. And we're going to, if I, if I click the primary of this remote, you can see that a laser show shows up on the character that is over there. If I click the right button on my mouse, it's the secondary and it lights up the closest chest. So if you don't believe me that that works, I'm just going to head down here and then we'll go down this road a little bit here and we can see that if I click the right mouse button again, that is where the other chest is that I've marked that I need to go find. Now, you guys are probably wondering, yeah, but what about that teleporting business? No problem. We're going to use our second remote, our primary, click it, and that is going to toggle a logic value which will change between using the laser show or using the teleporting. So I'm going to right mouse button click, which is our secondary, and that should take us to the chest. And if I click the left mouse button, which is our primary trigger for this, it should take us right on top of our other player. Okay, let's learn how to do all of this. Okay, so as usual, we are inside of UEFN. I'm going to cover everything that we use inside of this game. I am currently at Tilted Towers. I've simply taken the template and used it for this example here. Okay, so we have a few things that we need to do here. We need our player spawners. We've got one here and then one just over on the building over here. We have two signal remote managers, a VFX device, a HUD device, and our game manager verse device that we are making from scratch, essentially. All of these other items are in your content browser inside of Fortnite and then devices. And you look inside of here and you just drag them on. Covered this a million times check the tutorial in the description below for the beginner tutorial on how to use verse. We won't cover all of that. Another thing to talk about quickly is how I find all of these chests. You can't actually find them just by coding something. I actually use a blueprint, which is just a sphere in this case that is invisible. I've set it to be not visible in the details panel. And I've placed five of those in the game. You can see here I've got chest marker, chest marker two, three, four, five. And these are all just blueprints and uh, a sphere mesh that sort of lives inside of there. Nothing special whatsoever. And that is all the devices that we need for this. Let's take a look at the verse so that we can build this all out. Before we get too far into this, I want to thank everybody over on Patreon for being here. You guys are the best. Thank you for being such rock stars and sticking with me on this one. It literally drives this tutorial series. Okay, so we are inside of Verse now, and this left-hand side comes up automatically, but I wanted to tell you guys that if you hit Control b it goes away, because you don't always need it. You might want more space on your screen to do some coding. So that's a little tip for you. OK, so we have our game manager. Now, the game manager is our main verse device. I already covered how to make this. Check other tutorials for that. We've got our players map and our global user unique ID, which I covered in the last tutorial. But these are just for keeping track of the players. We're actually not doing much with this this time around, but I do it for every single game. Very important. Okay, we've got our two player spawner devices. They're editables, as we've mentioned in the past. Making them an editable means that when you select Select your game manager verse device. You can go and check inside of the details panel to see all of the things that you can connect up to it from the stage. So we also have two signal remote managers. One is the normal one and one is the toggle one, which I use just for this tutorial. You don't need this, but this is kind of a good lesson to learn. And they are signal remote manager devices. The VFX device that does the laser show is a VFX spawner device. Teleporter to make us move around is a teleporter device. And finally, the HUD message device, which shows a quick HUD message when you found a player or a chest. We have a string to message function here. I've covered this in the past. You need this to change the message for the HUD dynamically. Just something to remember and do. And then I've got this toggle here, which you guys don't need to do, but we've done for this tutorial to hopefully teach you something kind of interesting and new. So on begin runs when the game starts. All of these things are literally just subscribe methods for the variety of devices that we have. So we have our P1 spawner spawn event. We should probably do the P2 spawner as well, even though I'm not using the player stuff in this one. It's a good idea to have them in. So get play space player removed event. We want that for normal games. I put this in here so that you guys can get the idea of what you should be doing for every single game that you make. Signal remote manager, the first one, 
uh, is uh, we're going to listen to the primary signal event and we're going to call on remote clicked and also the secondary signal event on secondary remote click and then the toggle one which is going to change the do teleport instead of vfx logic value that we're going to listen to the primary signal event every toggle has a primary and a secondary. Now we give a toggle device with an item grantor. So this item grantor is set up so that we grant two items when the game starts. We're gonna keep all items when we grant it. We're gonna grant all items. And the first one is the remote B and then remote D. These are two different types of remotes, which we can listen to with the remote managers here. Make sure to set the remote managers up to either, you know, whichever one you want is common, uncommon, rare, epic, and legendary. I'm using a legendary one and the rare one, which is B, B and D right here. So B and D. So the other one here is set up for rare. Something to keep in mind, you've got to keep these lined up with what you give your players. I like the blue one and the gold one. So that's all I've used. There's no other reason for it. This is enabled at game start and we are going to grant on game start here. Okay, so once the remote is granted, we can use it and we want to be able to listen to it. So that's what all of this is for. So on toggle remote clicked is simply a toggle between true and false for the do teleport instead of VFX. So that I could show you guys, you can either mark something and be able to see it like a hide and seek kind of thing, or you can teleport to it. So I'm just triggering the difference there. Nothing exciting going on. The secondary remote clicked is to find the closest chest and the other one, which is down here, more the remote clicked for the left mouse button is to find the closest player. These are two different functions that we're running. So find the closest chest. I'm really just kind of going off of my distance tutorial that I put up a while back. This is nothing special, nothing interesting in that regard, but we want to find the closest one. So we're going to set our closest chest to be a creative prop an empty creative prop. We're going to overwrite this later because we know we're going to find creative props, but we also are going to be tracking whether or not we found it. This is in, this is kind of important just in case we don't find a chest. Like if we were to remove chests as we find them or do something, then we would want this to come back false so that no marker or no teleportation happens. We put in here the distance to me as a billion. I don't know. It doesn't really matter. It has to be a very, very high number that we're never going to get in the game because we want to find out something that is closer than the farthest thing and this is the farthest thing four chest in chest now this is an array this is an array of creative props which is all of our blueprints so we're going to run through this whole array and this is how we do it we loop through an array by going four chest which is just a value you could put anything in here of the chess array and then we say hey get my fort character because we need to know my position, which is a vector three, which we get from the get transform translation value. The chest position is also a get transform, a get transform and translation. These are vector three and the total distance is going to be a float, which we just use the distance method, compare the two of them and then divide by hundred to get meters, hundred point zero. Cause remember this is a float. And then we just check to see if the total distance is smaller than distance to me. If it is, set that as the closest item to me. Set the chest as the chest that we found and that we actually found it. Okay, hopefully you guys are following all of this. If we found the chest, now we get to do a thing. If not, we do nothing. We uh, set the HUD text so you found a chest, we show it. We then grab the position of that particular chest. We say, hey, are we doing a teleport or a VFX? If we are doing a teleport instead of VFX, we are going to tell the teleporter to teleport to, which means to move it to the position of the chest plus 200 centimeters above it. So one height amount of our player and set the rotation is the same because who cares? And then we call the teleport method on the teleporter to teleport the agent. And that's how we would teleport to a thing. And the same thing for the player. I'll show you that in a second. If not, we're doing a VFX device. So the lasers is really cool because it goes through everything and you can see it from a long ways away. We enable that and then we're going to spawn a disable. We've covered this in the past, but essentially we want to disable this VFX so it doesn't go on for very long. And that's down here where we call this function here, which is a suspend. So it suspends activity so that we can sleep and have a little snooze, little timer, a little three second timer. And then we disable the VFX spawner device that we passed in to that function up here, right here, because it's the only one that's in here. Now, if you have lots of players, you're going to want more VFX devices, but I'm not covering that in this tutorial. It's too much to put in. It's a little bit advanced. Okay, so we also want to know how to find the closest player, right? 
it's the same thing. We literally want to do exactly this, except we want to find the other player. So to find the other player, we want to go through all the players that are in our play space. This is a very easy way to do this. You get play space, which is the space of the game. We get all the players that exist inside of it, and that is an array of players. Simple. We can even get the player count. If you want to know how many players are in your game, you can get this by the length of the array. So a little extra tip. So we can even print how many players there are in the game. And I'm kind of picky. So if there's one, then we want to go, there is one player in the game. If there's more than one or zero, which is weird, there are two players in the game. So you can kind of do that kind of thing just to be a little more cool. Okay, so we're doing the same thing. We're finding the closest player, except this one is an optional agent. If you've never done this before, it's important to learn about it, meaning that we can't set a default value in here. We can't set some agent that doesn't exist. So we set it to false, and this is an optional. This may be confusing. If not, just try to listen, memorize this for now, and later on it'll make some sense. We're doing the same thing, distance to me, found player. We're gonna run through all of the players in that array, just like we did with the chess. We're gonna make sure that we're not checking ourselves because we don't want to know if we are me kind of idea. And player and agent are pretty much the same kind of object, so we can do a comparison between the two. No problem there. So we get our fort character, we get the other four character that we have found in the array, because there should be more than one player. If not, this will not run. We get my position, the other person's position, just like we got the chest position. We check out the distance, and then we say, hey, is this closer than a million or whatever this is? Uh, if so, then make that the closest thing to me, the closest player to me. And we're going to set the closest player because closest player here is an optional agent. So it's a maybe it's an agent. Then we use option with the little curly brackets here and we put the player inside of there so that it still sets closest player as an optional item. Kind of confusing. I remember when I first learned about it, I just was, I don't understand this, but this is how it works. Okay, so if we found the player, if we found a player that's closest to us, if, remember if there's only one player in the game, then we're not gonna find anybody. So we wanna know if we found them or not, just like for the chess. And we'll set the HUD to do its thing. And then uh, we're going to grab that player. So player agent, agent, and then we cast this closest player, which is an optional agent, to an agent by putting it in square brackets and then cast to the agent and put a little question mark at the end. And this will cast it to player agent object. Very useful. Don't forget this stuff. Then we get the position of everybody kind of thing. And we check to see if we're teleporting or using a VFX device. And we did the same thing. We teleport to 200 centimeters above the other player, and teleport us, which is why we land on their head. It's kind of funny. You can do this for X or Y and have yourselves come beside or behind or in front or something like that. You can minus off of this to be in a particular direction. You would maybe check to see which direction they're facing, show up behind them, that kind of stuff. But for now, we're just showing up on top. Nice and easy peasy. The rest of this is just the default stuff that I put in for every game. We've got our on player removed and we've got our on player spawned which doesn't really do anything for this particular game because we're just trying to find what's going on. We've got our custom player verse file, which again is very, very minimal, but I encourage everybody to learn to do this, even if you're not using them. That's what I do, and it's very important. And that's it. That's the whole thing. That's how you can teleport to a player or teleport to another object or use a VFX device or something like that to find it. Do a little hide and seek kind of thing. That would be kind of fun. And uh, hopefully that's been interesting. If you have any questions, let me know. And uh, of course, the code is overall on Patreon if you don't want to write it all out. And I'll see you guys in the next one.